I just got my hands on a 2022 Yamaha XT250 dual sport motorcycle. I'm going to talk about the purchase, the decisions I made, insurance, the modifications I want to make for it. I've wanted one of these bikes forever. Okay, some big news. It's big news to me, but it might, might not be big news when you hear what it is. You'll say, oh, that's pretty small news. But the big news for me is that I just bought a Yamaha XT250 dual sport motorcycle, on off-road motorcycle. And I've been looking for a while, and my mind has changed about every hour that I was looking. Look for about three weeks, and you, can you imagine how many motorcycles I thought about buying uh, every hour for three weeks? But seriously, you know, you come across one bike, you look at a lot of reviews on uh, YouTube, and you go see a few, and then it comes down to availability, because these motorcycles, these small dual sports, no matter who makes them, man, people are snatching them up as soon as they become available. So, uh, a few weeks ago, I went to a place called, uh, Right now, Georgetown in Georgetown, Texas. And their website said that they had a used one, 2020, with only six miles on it. So I went down there to check it out. Uh, wasn't serious yet, just wanted to test ride it. Now, I've been wanting one of these ever since I was, god dang, 18 years old. Uh, and when I saw Sylvester Stallone as John Rambo riding one in the first movie, Rambo. So, I go down to Georgetown, just want to check it out, ride it, get on it, stand up on it while I'm riding it, because that's what you got to do when you're off-road, learn how to stand up on the pegs. And um, before I test ride it, you know, a finance manager uh, hands me some numbers, and he has like $6,700 written down as the out-the-door price. Now, mind you, this motorcycle is a 2020. Now the salesman, I think he made a mistake. Because he told me that the bike was bought and three days later the buyer brought it back and said he didn't want it. And he said, so I think we're putting out on consignment for him. Now, that tells me consignment tells me that they are going to try to recoup that buyer's money. So, when I look down at this uh, price workup sheet to purchase order, I just push it away and I say, hey, I'm just really here to test drive it right now. I mean, I'm a 60-year-old man. I'm in no hurry. I'm never in a hurry to go anywhere, do anything. Everything I do is with purpose. It's thought about. So uh, I push the document away from him and I go for the test ride. And then I come in from the test ride and he has uh, whited out the price and he's now got 6400 today only. So I told him, I said, man, like I said, I'm not ready to buy today. I'm not going to make any commitment on this. So I leave. And I'm thinking about it. And I go home. And I call the next day. I speak to uh, the salesman first. He puts me in touch with another finance manager named Anna. Anna goes over uh, with me the price again, and I go over with her that I don't like their $571 setup fee because uh, they sold this motorcycle, and somebody put a couple miles on it and brought it back. What are they telling, charging me a setup fee? And she tells me, oh, we got to run it through maintenance checks and all that kind of stuff just to make sure it's roadworthy. Okay, Anna, I understand that. It's only got six miles on it. And then there was another fee, $499. Asked her what that was. And it was for uh, lifetime battery replacement. Now when I test rode it, I saw this little uh, dongle hanging off the side of the motorcycle for, you know, a uh, battery tender. And, but I thought, $499 for batteries for life? 
that's kind of expensive because what's a battery cost you? You know, depending on what kind of battery you buy, it could cost you anywhere from $69 up to $150. And what do I need battery for life for? And she says, well, anytime your battery goes dead, you know, you have a problem with it for life. You can replace your uh, battery replacement for life. Well, it's something we put on all of our motorcycles. So I told her, I said, well, 6,400 is too much for this motorcycle. Consider it used, consider it taken out of your shop and registered and driven by a by someone who bought it, and then they brought it back. It's no longer a new motorcycle. So see, the MSRP on a new XT250 is $51.99. And their, their price on this bike was uh, $5,099. Just $100 less than a new one. I didn't make them a counter offer. I didn't tell them what I was willing to pay. I just asked them if they would come down in price. Will you do that, Anna, and give me a call? Sure, I'll do that and give you a call. Oh. One, Sunday and Monday they were closed. Well, all, all day Saturday she did not call me. Then Sunday and Monday they were closed. She didn't call me, so I just took that as a sign that they didn't want to come down in price. And I wasn't going to call them back and beg them or haggle with them or get angry with them or anything. You know, you, you know, these dealers, they are either in the business of selling you a motorcycle or they are in the business of keeping the motorcycle until they can sell it to some fool that will pay their exorbitant setup fee on a used motorcycle and the $499 battery for life deal. I know what they were doing. This bike was truly on consignment and they were trying to get back the money to the guy who bought the thing. You know, they're doing him a favor, but they're not doing me any favors. They weren't interested in selling me that motorcycle. They were interested in getting the previous buyer's money back. And that's on him. But I did find another one at Woods Cycle Center. I hope I'm saying their name right. If I'm not, I'll put it as text in the video. Wood Cycle Center or Wood Cycle Complex, I forget which one, in New Braunfels, Texas. I saw one pop on Cycle Trader and uh, I immediately called down and said, uh, I want to buy this motorcycle. I want to do a deposit over the phone. So I did a $500 deposit over the phone, did their credit application over the phone uh, to secure it. Um, and then I had to go down there and do the paperwork, show my license and all that kind of crap. Uh, went down there, everything went smoothly. I didn't see the motorcycle, I didn't have to see the motorcycle. They told me that earlier in the week they got two TW100s and six XT250s and I was buying the fifth one. So they came in. Uh, at $6,535 on a brand new 2022 Yamaha XT250. So right now I know they're beating the hell out of right now Georgetown in Georgetown, Texas. And they want to sell me this motorcycle. I don't come down asking them to come down in price. I don't give them a counter offer, nothing. I just, I just sign. Now, when it comes to financing, you know, you got to see somebody other than the salesman and he wants to sell you a maintenance plan and all that kind of stuff and there were like three different options maybe four and I uh, told him I said well I'm not interested in a maintenance plan of any kind because I think this little XT250 is going to last forever they all do and so I declined that but their interest rate was 7.99% and I thought that that was way too high so, uh, and I have a good credit score. So on the Yamaha website, there was an offer for 2.99% financing for 36 months. And I said, hey, I want to go for that. They already had all my information and stuff when I applied for their credit. So they submitted that to Yamaha Financial and uh, it came back approved. So I um, got a 2.99% for 36 months. And then I put $2,500 down on it. And I believe my payments are like 102 a month. 
for 36 months. That's not bad. Insurance, 153 a year with Geico. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Because going back to uh, my mind changing on what kind of motorcycle that I wanted every hour for three weeks, well, one of the motorcycles I also considered was the KTM Duke 890R. 115 horsepower engine, like 95 pounds of torque. But when I punched in the VIN on the Geico website, it came back to like about $890 a year for insurance on that. Now I also typed in the 890 Adventure, and it was only $253 a year, the same that I pay on my Triumph Speedmaster. So, uh, you know, that's one thing that you got to do. Any kind of motorcycle that you want to buy, you have to. It's a must. You have to check out how much you're going to pay for insurance on that thing before you buy it. Because once you buy it, now you're committed to whatever the payment is going to be for your insurance. So, uh, anyway, I also considered a Yamaha Tenere 700. Uh, I considered the uh, Kawasaki Versus 650. Um, but I'm telling you, I didn't go with anything else because in my heart, like I said, from the time I was 18 years old, I have wanted a Yamaha XT250 because of the seat height mainly and the price. And it's a good, reliable motorcycle. So that's what I went with. Had I bought any of those other bikes, man, I would still be longing for a Yamaha XT250. And I'd probably be kicking myself in the butt for not getting one. But there is a moral to this story and that is that if you are interested in one of these small dual sport motorcycles you need to get on it and buy it when it's available because it's not going to last these guys down at woods cycle country like i said they got six of them in and like three days later i'm buying the fifth one so, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I made that move, and I'm glad I made that move quickly. And uh, Woods, also, I live 97 miles from them. Two hour and 20 minute drive down there. They're going to deliver it to me for free. Free delivery. So, uh, they were going to deliver it on um, Tuesday. And at 3 p.m. and I said no don't deliver it on Tuesday at 3 p.m. because you guys got to drive back down there and through Austin and and traffic on its way to San Antonio so uh, I don't want I don't want your guys to be driving back down there after 3 p.m. in the going home rush hour traffic so uh, bring it Wednesday if you can so they're gonna bring it on Wednesday at 11 in the morning and I'm just so happy I'm ecstatic over this motorcycle it's going to be a great thing I'm going to have to learn to uh, ride off road I've already got um, a uh, bash plate skid plate ordered for underneath uh, I'm going to see what the bike already has as far as uh, how, how I can tie luggage they've got some passenger grab handles back there on the rear um, I want to check out to see, you know, what I can t attach to that before I start buying any uh, racks or anything, luggage racks. Uh, what else do I want to do to it right away? I want to put a brighter headlight bulb in it and change, maybe, if, the, if it doesn't have LED turn signals, taillights and shit, I'm going to buy some LEDs for that. I was thinking that there was one more thing I want to do. I forget what it is. Right now I'm out for a doctor's appointment and uh, traffic is moving slow. What's going on here? I gotta change lanes and get over because I gotta make a right hand turn up here. Let's see. Headlight turn signals, skid plate, luggage rack. Oh yeah, another thing I want to do is put on some uh, bark busters, handlebar protectors, because all, all I've been seeing in videos is that 
those are necessary whenever you uh, go off-roading in them. Uh, the bike falls over, you can bend or break off clutch lever or brake level lever, so those are needed. So uh, I'm at my appointment, so goodbye, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm really excited I'll be uh, putting that XT250 on here real soon. Bye everybody. If you like this video, if you enjoy, enjoy this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you get updated on everything that's new. Kickstand down, neutral, off. GoPro, stop recording.